Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training channel, George Kelly's Personal Construct Theory. Have you ever wondered why people perceive the same situation differently? Welcome to the fascinating world of the Personal Construct Theory. This psychological lens, crafted by the ingenious George Kelly, offers a unique insight into the intriguing differences in our perceptions and behaviors. It proposes that each of us constructs our own version of reality, shaped by individual experiences and interpretations. So no two perceptions are truly identical. Intrigued? Dive in to unravel the mystery of the human mind with personal construct theory. The fundamental postulate and corollaries. George Kelly proposed the fundamental postulate stating that our behaviors are shaped by how we predict and anticipate events. Let's break this down. The fundamental postulate suggests that we as individuals are constantly trying to make sense of the world around us. We do this by forming personal constructs or mental representations. These constructs help us predict and anticipate future events, guiding our behavior. Imagine you're a child learning about the world. You touch a hot stove and burn your hand. You form a construct that stoves are hot and can cause pain. This construct will guide your future behavior. You'll likely avoid touching stoves to prevent getting burned. Now, let's delve into the 11 corollaries that Kelly proposed, which further explain how we use constructs to navigate life. The most critical ones include the construction, experience, dichotomy, and choice corollaries. The construction corollary suggests that we use past experiences to anticipate future ones, like how you learned not to touch the hot stove. The experience corollary tells us that repeated events solidify our constructs. If you touch the stove once and it's hot, you might think it's always hot. But if you touch it several times at different times and it's not always hot, you learn that the stove isn't always hot. The dichotomy corollary states that our constructs are bipolar. For instance, you categorize stoves as either hot or not hot. There's no in-between. Lastly, the choice corollary says that we choose the option that allows us to predict the outcome most accurately. You choose not to touch the stove because you can predict you'll get burned. As we navigate through life, we're constantly testing and revising our constructs based on new experiences and knowledge. We're like scientists, developing and testing hypotheses about our world. In essence, we are all scientists, predicting and interpreting the world around us. The Basic Postulate The Basic Postulate is the foundation of personal construct theory. This robust statement heralds the beginning of our deep dive into George Kelly's groundbreaking concept. The basic postulate is a no-nonsense assertion that our psychological processes are primarily engaged in the anticipation of future events. That's right. Our minds are constantly in a state of prediction, looking forward to what may come next. It's like we're all born with a little fortune teller inside our heads, using past experiences and current perceptions to forecast the future. Now let's break this down a bit further. This postulate suggests that our actions, thoughts, and feelings are based on how we anticipate or predict future events. We don't simply react to what's happening in the present moment. Instead, we're proactive beings, always on the lookout for what might happen next. But here's the kicker. These future events are not anticipated based on some objective reality. Instead, they're predicted based on our personal interpretation of what has happened in the past and what is happening now. It's through this lens that we construct our reality. Imagine you're navigating a maze, but instead of a traditional labyrinth, it's made up of your life experiences. Each turn, each dead end, and each triumphant exit is a part of your reality. You interpret these experiences, learn from them, and use that knowledge to make predictions about what lies ahead in the maze. This is how we construct our reality, according to the basic postulate. However, it's crucial to understand that this constructed reality is not a concrete, unchangeable entity. It's fluid, ever-changing and unique to each individual. Your reality is not the same as mine, and mine is not the same as yours. We all have our mazes, our experiences and our interpretations, which shape our unique realities. So the next time you find yourself reacting to a situation, remember that you're not just responding to the here and now. You're drawing on your personal constructs, your past experiences, and your interpretations to anticipate what's next. Our reality is a construct of our mind, shaped by our personal experiences. This is the essence of the basic postulate, the foundation of personal construct theory. CPC cycle, the circumspection preemption control CPC cycle, is an integral part of personal construct theory. 
Now, let's dive into the intriguing world of the CPC cycle. Imagine it as a mental roadmap, guiding our thought processes, and ultimately, our decision-making. It's a three-step dance, where each step is as crucial as the last. First, we have circumspection. This is the moment when we scan our environment, taking in all the information available. We are explorers, navigating a sea of data, observing and evaluating. It's the stage where we ask ourselves, what's happening here? Like detectives, we sift through clues, seeking to understand the context, the players, the potential outcomes. Next up is preemption. This stage is about forming hypotheses based on our circumspection. We might ask ourselves, what could happen if? It's the moment of narrowing down, of selecting the most likely scenarios. It's like being at a crossroads and visualizing where each path might lead. We preempt, anticipate, and imagine the potential consequences of our actions. Finally, we reach control. This is the stage of action where we take the reins and make our decision. We've scanned, we've hypothesized, and now we execute. We take that step forward, choose that path, make that call. It's the culmination of our mental journey, the point where thought transforms into action. Together, these three stages form a cycle. We're constantly moving through circumspection, preemption, and control as we navigate our lives. It's a dynamic, ongoing process that shapes our decisions and in turn, our reality. Remember, this is not a linear path, but a cycle. After the control stage, we don't just stop. We return to circumspection, taking in new information from our environment and the cycle begins anew. The CPC cycle is more than a theory. It's a window into the human mind, revealing how we process information, make decisions and interact with our world. It's the heartbeat of our cognitive life, constantly pulsing, constantly driving us forward. The CPC cycle is our mind's algorithm for making decisions. Constructive alternativism. Constructive alternativism posits that there are multiple ways of interpreting the same event. This concept, a cornerstone of George Kelly's personal construct theory, challenges us to break free from the constraints of a single perspective and encourages us to explore a myriad of interpretations for our experiences. Imagine you're in a room with an elephant. Your initial instinct might be to interpret the elephant as a massive, intimidating creature. But what if you shifted your perspective? What if you viewed the elephant as a symbol of strength and wisdom? Suddenly the elephant isn't so intimidating. This is constructive alternativism in action. Now you might be thinking, that's all well and good, but why should I bother with alternative interpretations? Kelly would argue that it's not just about seeing things differently for the sake of being different. It's about enriching our understanding of the world and ourselves. Constructive alternativism encourages us to continually reassess our interpretations, to challenge our preconceived notions, and to actively seek out alternative ways of understanding. It's about expanding our perceptual world, not limiting it to a single rigid viewpoint. And the beauty of constructive alternativism is that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It allows for individual variation and personal growth. It recognizes that each of us is a unique individual with our own set of experiences and interpretations. It affirms that our perspectives are not fixed but fluid, capable of change and adaptation. But perhaps the most empowering aspect of constructive alternativism is its potential to foster resilience. By exploring alternative interpretations, we can learn to adapt to changing circumstances, to find silver linings in challenging situations, and to maintain a positive outlook even when things don't go our way. So the next time you find yourself stuck in a particular way of thinking, remember constructive alternativism. Challenge yourself to view the world through a different lens. Explore alternative interpretations. You might just discover a whole new perspective you never knew existed. Constructive alternativism teaches us that our perception is not the only reality. Psychological problems. Personal construct theory also offers insights into psychological problems. In the realm of this theory, psychological problems are often viewed as the result of faulty or rigid personal constructs. Imagine the constructs as glasses through which we view the world. Now, what if these glasses have a crack or are tinted in a color that distorts our view of reality? That's when psychological problems can arise. Let's consider a person who has developed a rigid construct that success equates to perfection. This construct could lead to excessive stress, anxiety and even depression when they inevitably fall short of this unattainable standard. 
their rigid construct of success is distorting their perception of reality, leading to psychological distress. Faulty constructs can be equally problematic. For example, a person might hold a belief that they are unworthy of love. This faulty construct could stem from past experiences and greatly impact their ability to form healthy relationships. They might push away those who show them kindness, interpreting this as a sign of impending rejection. The beauty of George Kelly's personal construct theory is that it suggests we are not helpless in the face of these constructs. We have the ability to change them. By recognizing and challenging our faulty or rigid constructs, we can start to see the world more clearly. Understanding our constructs can be the key to solving our psychological problems. Through self-reflection and possibly therapeutic intervention, we can dismantle harmful constructs and build healthier ones in their place. Summing up, so what does personal construct theory tell us about ourselves? It reveals that our perceptions are shaped by personal constructs, which are continuously tested and refined through the CPC cycle. The fundamental and basic postulates underscore our active role in interpreting experiences. Constructive alternativism posits that multiple realities exist, and we choose which to perceive. Psychological problems arise when our constructs fail to predict events. So remember, we are not just passive observers but active interpreters of our world. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.